The Destiny Content Vault, or the DCV. I know that a lot of us know what this is, but for those who don't know what it is, um, just to kind of give you a little bit of a rundown, like a very quick explanation. Basically, it's an idea that Bungie uh, pushed forward to ensure that Destiny 2 could continue to evolve without any problems of errors and glitches and all kinds of bad things happening to the game as it continues to evolve and be added with new content. So, of course, they would strip away content that maybe is old or not played that much to make room for uh, huge expansions to continue to evolve the game. It was mainly uh, created to ensure the Destiny 2 uh, experience could continue to evolve with not many, many uh, problems with, like I said, technical issues or anything al along those lines. It wasn't just because Bungie was just like, hey, I know you bought this thing, but it's mine now. I'm taking away from you. They, they, of course, I'm pretty sure, like 100% sure, that they would love to keep these things in the game because uh, having your game with tons and tons of things to do would be uh, phenomenal to have the game be as large um it would get a lot of players wanting to play your game because of the amount of things that they can do especially if they're starting brand new to the game so no i don't think that bungie was just like we hate you we want the thing that you bought from us back <laughs> um there, there are some good things out of the dcv of course like getting d1 content for free like the fall to glass and the next raid that we're going to be seeing um plus it's it's cool that they take uh they took the um leviathan raid turned it into a patrol zone and made it the theme of the season of haunted uh season like I, th there's some cool things but there are certain areas that i'm very very much disappointed when it comes to the dcv and that's kind of why i wanted to make this video because um it's been a while of us dealing with the dcv and i'm now starting to really uh be hit by the negativity of the concept when it comes to the core playlists and uh maybe some other areas but yeah i just kind of want to give my criticism crit criticism my goodness can't even speak of the dcv and kind of explain where i would hope bungie would go going forward when it comes to uh destiny 2 or in this case destiny 3 um and stuff because i'll probably talk about that as well of, a, of an idea because one of the reasons why the dcv was created was to ensure that we didn't have to start over again with a destiny 3 which is both good and maybe bad like uh it depends on how you look at it um but yeah uh anyways the core playlists let's just just go right right into it uh to start talking about the core playlists now, I, I've, I've said that I feel like the, the free-to-play model has definitely made the core playlists um, be not as much as a huge focus as it was in the past because, well, obviously Bungie uh, doesn't charge us anymore for Crucible maps, for Strikes. Well, I, I think Strikes, you still have to buy those. I'm not entirely sure how that one goes. Um but like 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 the 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 new strikes that we've gotten like glassway and um the uh throne world strikes i don't know if those are things that you have to pay for or if those are free but i know that regardless like the the main strikes are there free same thing with gambit like they're not charging us for gambit maps so yeah like the the concept of the dcv uh with the free to play model is kind of made me assume that the reason why the core playlists were not a huge focus in general is because they don't make money off of it. And that's kind of why I've I've liked the free-to-play model, but also hated it. Because, I mean, back when season passes were a thing, uh, you would see content being made a whole lot more because, obviously, they're charging you. I mean, uh, if they're charging you for an expansion, obviously, they have to ensure that there is content that's worth your money they're not, they're not gonna get money if they don't supply enough stuff i uh, look at taken king like with the crucible maps they didn't have a free-to-play model and we got like what nine maps and uh it's been 600 days or whatever till we got uh the recent destiny 2 map 
that is brand new, uh, but we've seen a lot of maps be stripped away with the DCV, so it's 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 just, it's messy. But I don't want to go into the free-to-play model that much and where the, oh, maybe that's why that there's not much focus to it, because uh, I could probably make a video just talking about that uh, in general, uh, on my thoughts on uh, the free-to-play model and, like, where things are not getting much of a focus or whatever, but... Where I want to talk about is, in general, just, like I said, the core playlists and how I feel about uh, the DCV uh, affecting them. Like, I mean, okay. The Strike playlist is probably um, the first one I want to talk about because I, in Destiny 1, I would play uh, Strikes all the time. I, I I would love to grind for strike exclusives. I, I I mean the concept of the heroic strike playlist was very nice because there were fun modifiers and burns that were ridiculously punishing, but also really fun. It, it depend on your build. Like what did you create to bring into the heroic playlist? Destiny two, uh, we don't have that. Instead. What we have is uh, over here. We go to the Vanguard. Go to Vanguard Ops and boom. There you go. Three modifiers. Void Singe. Which Singe I believe is only like a 25% increased um, of damage. While in Destiny 1 it was 300% for a burn. Very very different. And then we just got Grenadier. More damage with gren uh, grenades and Blackout. Like basically how it always goes is like we get a Singe. Some kind of boost of our ability or something like that, and a negative thing like uh, blackout or iron or something like that. In Destiny One, you would see tons of other modifiers, and I know that a lot of you would probably go, "Well, uh, why don't you do the Nightfall uh, then?" Well, the Nightfall is a Nightfall. Uh, there, there, it was very different with the heroic playlist, like compared to like a Nightfall. It wasn't. Uh, meant to be super duper du uh, duper difficult. It was supposed to be a uh, double-sided sword or whatever the, the, the terminology is. Basically where uh, if if it's a burn of like arc, for example, arc, small arms, uh, that's the other thing. We haven't seen small arms other than Guardian games uh, that one, see, uh, one year. Uh, the concept of small arms was they increased the kinetic damage and then you would have like arc burn. So Maybe let's just hypothetically say we we're going through the Omnigal Strike. Well, is now Navoda uh, in Destiny 2. She uh, throws a lot of arc and it hurts. And with the burn being 300%, yeah, you 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 Guardian down very quickly. But if you have an arc primary because of the small arms, you're also going to do a lot of damage yourself. It made it very interesting. It made every strike feel unique because of the burns, because of the modifiers, because of the negative modifiers, because of the good modifiers. I mean, if you remember back uh, in D2 vanilla days with Blackout, which is uh, where melee damage is increased by enemies, that was OP. It was basically like heroic strike level of difficult where... Uh, they they made the um the boopy walls in like Lake of Shadows were affected with blackout as well. And if you got hit once, you died <laughs> instantly. It was hilarious. And it made you have to really change how you were playing the heroic strike. Again, it's not a nightfall, so it's not as punishing in the sense of like uh you know, being revived and uh, there's no, like, champions or anything like that. Like, no restrictions on that front. Uh, but, yeah, it was... You had to change how you were playing that strike because of Blackout. Then they nerfed it. It's It doesn't insta-kill you any, anymore. It's, it's disappointing because, yes, I get it. It's Vanguard Ops, but maybe do a heroic playlist? But they haven't. Like, when they did the DCV, I, I instantly thought to myself, okay, they are removing tons of in tons of strikes and a lot of them were good the thing with the pvp maps and gambit maps was at least they were looking at maps that maybe the general audience didn't like um like the dreaming city gambit map or honestly i like the tangled shore one i really did like that one i thought that was more faster paced because of the, the the gravity lifts and stuff 
Um, but they removed that. They removed some PvP maps that weren't as popular. But the strikes, they had to just kind of remove any of them that were tied to the patrol zones that uh, they were removing, which was disappointing. And um, when they did that, it really, really hurt the strike playlist. It hurt all the core playlists. And that's why I, I just want them to find a different concept going forward. Because if they're not going to at least evolve the playlists, uh, honestly, I was hoping that they were going to make a heroic playlist with strike exclusives that would evolve every season. Like maybe like um, they would have Grasp of Malak and Navoda. And then maybe the like next year, uh, they would add another weapon and then change the the roles to grasp a Malak to uh, match the new perks that they've added throughout the seasons and stuff. Like so, then there's always a reason to go back and farm those weapons and and uh, do the strikes. Plus, like I said, they would introduce burns. They would do it exactly how it was in D1, but they didn't, and I don't know why. Like. I, I I really am disappointed with that. Then, of course, you know, PvP hasn't really seen much attention with PvP maps, like brand new ones. We haven't seen that many modes, and I know they're gradually starting to do that. But, like, why why did it take this long? Gambit? Well, Gambit's not getting any kind of attention, really. They've tried to do some new concepts here and there, uh, but nothing too crazy. And they haven't, like, added any new maps or... Um, you know, did any new, like, modes out of it in a way. They just kind of messed with the little concepts of it, like how the invasions work and stuff. It's, yeah, like I said, the core playlists have been hit pretty hard. And that's where I like to put a lot of focus in Destiny, where it's a video game. It's, you just load it up, load into the core playlists, and play. And then if I want to do... The other activities that require fire teams, uh, like getting some friends uh, online, like raids, dungeons and stuff, I'll do that uh, on the side. But when I just kind of want to play, um, just to play, make some cool builds and have fun with Destiny as a video game, I would go to the core playlist in Destiny 1. Specifically the heroic story. Uh, heroic story. The hor 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 yeah, can't speak. The heroic playlist. I mean, even in D1, they, they had also the heroic daily missions uh they had story missions with modifiers like the heroic strikes it was cool you were doing story missions like it was a strike and they don't even do that either imagine if they were like hey remember how we had heroic strike playlist and the daily story missions and stuff like that and how we only had the strike exclusives inside of destiny uh one like the strike exclusives. Imagine if they were like, hey, in D2, we're going to have the heroic strike playlist, basically like in D1, burns, all that crazy stuff where it's punishing, but also great for you as well, where it's like double end of a sword. Um, and we'll continue to evolve the strike exclusives every year with new perks. Uh, so then there's a reason to go back and grind for the, the weapon again. Uh, and maybe, like, introduce new weapons and stuff to uh, strikes already that have a strike exclusive, like maybe an armor piece or a weapon or whatever. And then on top of that, they take the story missions and they add some strike exclusives to there as well. Like, it, it's just... I, I don't know. Like, it, it, would, uh, it would be nice to see things evolve past what d1 was like that's that's kind of where i'm at like with with destiny 2 like the the concept of dcv is understanding but it doesn't feel like i am seeing the at least the core playlist get anything in return for it being hit pretty hard and uh, that that's kind of where i'm at with with this the uh, next kind of like statement about how uh, how I feel like I kind of would much rather just have a Destiny 3 if this is how things are going to be or have the free to play model not be a thing at least in like the heroic strike playlist so then they can ensure like exclusive strikes that are tied to uh, you know paid content if that's the case and leave the Vanguard ops uh, strictly with like free strikes while like the heroic playlist is for paying uh, players of expansions i i don't know 
Because, I, I mean, I, I kind of look at it, the DCV, and I just feel like if this is what we're going to get with them stripping away content to ensure that we don't have to start over, I'd much rather just start over, if that's the case. I really do hope that Bungie is uh, looking into evolving the the game engine, so then this is not a thing. Like, uh, I would like there to be a day where uh, we're, we're in Destiny's future where they don't have to remove anything anymore. And if they do technically remove stuff, it's them evolving it. They're changing it. They're making it different. I mean, Exodus Crash has been in Destiny 2 since 2017, and it has gotten zero changes to it, like in Destiny 1, where they took, like, for example, the Archon Priest added Taken to it. Originally, it didn't have Taken. Not only that, but the boss would sometimes be a Taken version of the boss instead. Like, why are they not doing that in Destiny 2? And I know they could probably be like, well, lore-wise, it doesn't make sense. Does it really need to make sense? There, we're doing strikes that have Cade talking. He's dead. Like, it's just, it's a weird, weird, weird way of doing the DCV and then not evolving the game to fit with the story then. Like, just treat it like a video game. Heck, they even explained that with the, the PvP, where it's just a simulation. You're just going through a simulation, so the maps that you're playing on, it's not real. Halo did this concept as well with the, uh, with the Spartan games or whatever it was. It was just basically just Spartans in a simulation. Uh, they even had a map where it showed it all, like, in the simulation style. Like, Destiny 2 hasn't really taken advantage of that idea other than to kind of explain why there were some maps that were part of patrol areas that were gone in the story. And they were like, ah, oh, no, it was all simulation. Okay, now use that to your advantage. But it's just... Why? So that's kind of why I would like to see that happen with, like, strikes. Have it be fun. Make the game have some evolved stuff to it if they're going to do the DC fee. It's, I don't know. Like, okay. If it's because of the technical, uh, technical level, which I, I get that, then, like I said, at this point, um, maybe just evolve the game with a Destiny 3 or focus on making an engine that can uh, work around this a whole lot better. I don't know. Like, I'll, 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 I'll take anything if it means that the core playlist will get a lot more attention than they have lately. That's, that's all I can say. It's not because I'm, like, ignorant to the idea that, uh, of, like, why they had to do it. Again, I know why they did it. It's just, it sucks. And I, I don't know, I, I'm pretty sure a lot of you agree. There are great things in Destiny 2 that Destiny 1 doesn't have. Like, we didn't have dungeons, of course. We didn't see the amount of raids that we are now seeing with Destiny 2. Like, I I get that. Like, there's, there's many archetypes. I mean, the Glaive, that's new. I mean, Destiny 2 vanilla is very different than what it is now. Like, it, like the, the, the looking back, like, holy crap. There was so much difference in of what it was what destiny 2 was created to be than what it is now and i think that's kind of where bungie is mainly struggling is the engine was built to run what they were planning on doing with destiny 2 at vanilla D double primaries um we didn't have stasis where we didn't have you know arc 3.0 coming around the corner and all that stuff to make crazy builds we didn't have crazy exotics doing crazy things so, yeah, I, I get that, like, developers are probably struggling to keep up with the, the demands of how Destiny needs to be to evolve. And that's where I'm, I'm hoping that whether, wherever we're going, if we decide to continue with D2, all I'm saying is that if they continue to strip away stuff, make the content that is here for the time being have more value than what it is it sucks that most of the time whenever they do and it still is an issue with campaigns nobody's doing the the campaign anymore 
nobody's really going through it. Once you go through it once, you're done. Like, you, you don't have to grind it. It's not an effective thing to do. And it's, yeah, it may be fun to play through, but is it is it that fun to where you would go through it again? I don't think so. So that's why I said the concept of the this the daily heroic playlist that they did in D1 was a really smart idea. And I thought that concept could definitely evolve into D2 where they have exclusive uh, weapons and gear that you can get in that playlist. Give it the crazy modifiers that uh, like the burns, the 300% boost the damage, the add the small arms, the specialists, the whatever. All kinds of new modifiers as well. Maybe sometimes have like a, a week uh, where it brings the mayhem uh, modifier. Remember that? Daybreak, I think it was called in D1. Where you get your super super quickly and uh, your your grenades. It basically was mayhem. In, in PvE, it was cool. It was awesome. You would have weeks where things were an event, essentially, with what you were doing. It was nice. I'd like to see that. That's where I'm at. Like, okay. Let's 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 do that. Let's do that. Let's let, come on. <laughs> let's make Destiny have evolve uh like stuff to it to um the core playlist if we're going to see things stripped away. I, I it, it does it does suck that developers work so hard on certain things like patrol areas strikes story missions especially story missions and stuff and they're ignored after playing through it once i i think that they would be cool to see a playlist i know that they do have the um where you can farm ascendant alloys i i i, I will make that clear i get that here i'll even show it uh right now i know that they have this i get it a weekly story mission i get it but the thing is, though, is it's not the same. Like, yes, you can you go through the mission and you there's matchmaking. But see, there, there's not there's the champions. There's just this. There's that. It's not like the heroic playlist. Like uh, like you were, how it was in D1. It's it's not the same. And as you increase the difficulty, the modifiers don't become more fun in your favor. It just becomes more tedious. Match game, champions in general, uh, you know, enemies throw more grenades. The heroic playlist, it was it was a mystery, but there would be some some days or weeks, because uh, the modifiers didn't change daily, where it was a lot more intense uh, in your favor, depending on the build that you created, where all the benefits really benefited you. But again, things would be difficult right back. Bottom line is, is I don't know what Bungie can really do. They could definitely do a Destiny 3 and then to Destiny 4, but I feel like not everybody would be for that. I, I understand, and I, I kind of wouldn't want that either. I, I think that seeing Destiny 2 just stay Destiny 2 and see it evolve, get uh, giant engine upgrades as like years go by to where um, like it would be like a Destiny 3, would be nice, but I don't know. I, I just the DCV has not really made me uh like just kind of be like ignore uh, ignore it. Like it, it it's it doesn't bother me. It's not really affecting me. I I see it. I notice it. Like I said with the core playlist where it's hit the most, in my opinion. But I'm not gonna take more of your time just going and ranting about it all over, all over the place. Um. I, I want to know your thoughts, though, in the comments down below. Like, what what are your thoughts on the DCV? What are your thoughts on any of the things that I talked about? Do you agree, disagree? That's what I want to know. Regardless, though, I know that Bungie is working very, very hard to probably answer the things that I'm talking about. I'm just giving my feedback because it's not because I'm mad at what Bungie is doing. I understand what they're doing. I'm just disappointed. I used to play the Strike playlist all the time, nonstop. But now I don't really want to touch it often because it's it always feels the same. While the Heroic playlist in D1 felt very different. I don't know. But regardless though, I hope you have a chibi-tastic day, evening, night, wherever you are. And of course, thank you so much for listening. I'll see you in the next chibi video. Chibi out.